Hey guys, this is day two of extreme cooking and this is how I left my kitchen last night. I was too tired. I did not put anything away. That's my chicken that I'm going to make for tonight for dinner. It's 2.30 p.m. We had load shed in the morning and the better part I was actually lo uh, editing and <sighs> getting rid of the footage that I did not need and this is how my kitchen looks it's dirty it's filthy and we're going to try and get it into order before we continue with our day for today and <clears throat> this is what i managed to do uh last night it is the waffles the pop out the spinach one that i told you that it exploded and the burrito filling that i had and the rolls i think i got about 80 rolls from the mixture that i got i, I made and i had about uh, 22 burritos though some of them were not perfect were open but i was happy with them i had two and a half loaf of french toast and i had 16 pies and i had four loaves of chia butter and that's what I made last night. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Mm, this is everything that I made last night. So yeah, this is how it looks and we are going to <coughs> freeze it, flash freeze it. The burritos are already frozen and then it's just to put them into the the freezer because i just wanted to take a picture for you guys so i will tidy up first throw what needs to be thrown uh wash my dishcloth and i will do the hand wash of the, the the dishes that i cannot put in a dishwasher and i will unload the dishwasher and we will t we will take it from there i'm not gonna talk throughout the cleaning of the kitchen i think you guys can see what is happening here and yeah I, guys i was tired last night ne? i was tired but i don't regret it i never regret it because i know what it means i know how it helps me so i was happy with the outcome very 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 happy with the outcome and today we are finishing off what we started or not finishing off we are continuing with what we started yesterday so today i didn't wake up early i woke up at eight Yes, I woke up at 8 and <clears throat> load shedding happened at 8 until 10.30 and I started editing and getting rid of the footage that I did not need and once that was done, I had my lunch and then I came into the kitchen and started doing what I was supposed to do and continue with day 2.
when, once the dishes were done and the kitchen was somewhat decent, I started on dinner. My son has been asking me for for general tzo and that is what I am going to do today. That's what I'm going to cook today. I defrosted six chicken breasts. It's two times the portions that I normally make and I washed them and now I am pet drying, I am pet drying it and then I will cut it into cubes and then we will follow the, the method of how to make it. And once the chicken was cubed, then I measured one and a half cup of flour into a clean bowl. And I'm going to season it with whatever it is that I want. I'm adding onion powder. I love onion powder. I'm adding Italian herbs, parsley, and a little bit of yellow salt. You can use any seasoning that you want, but I don't like... Uh, using a lot of uh, or a seasoning that is too that is too much or is too too intense because the, the this recipe has soy sauce and soy sauce is very the taste is intense so and then i beat uh, i i i i cracked five eggs added a little bit of milk, maybe two tablespoons to three tablespoons, and then a little bit of yellow salt. Again, use moderate seasoning because all these components, when they combine, the, the, the taste might become a bit too much. Then I added the, the chicken into the egg mixture, and then we are going to start the breading of our chicken. Remember guys, you can do these steps times two. I did not repeat the steps. You can do times two, times two or times three. I did not do it two times or three times. And there's another method. You don't have to use flour. You can also use breadcrumbs, which will work beautiful. Or you can use fresh bread. Yes, I know fresh white bread you just shred it like roughly obviously you're going to take out the, the 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 crust outside and you will shred it and then the last part if you're going to do two times the second part will be the egg and the bread if you're going to do it three times the third part will be the egg and the, the and the bread and then your chicken will have that crunchiness into it. And another thing, these are basically nuggets, guys. You'll see as we continue with this, it's nuggets. This will do, it will do wonders for you if you want to feed kids. You can make this with mashed potato, peas on the side, and a sauce. You can even just do tomato sauce. But the sauce that I'm going to make for this chicken, for general dough, it is 
onion soup you can use it and your kids will love you so after i breaded that the, the chicken i put it in the fridge to chill for 30 minutes i wanted to show you guys how my kitchen looks once everything was was washed and cleaned and all of that obviously i didn't wipe the floors so i just took out the dirt a little bit but it was decent we could work with it considering that there was still more work to be done anger so this is how it looks it was ready i was it was decent for me to continue cooking on it so we are going to start on our sauce now hence i say i choose to call this sauce an onion soup you can use this on your steak you can use it even on pasta you can just add um, a little bit of acidic maybe add um well when you add tomato it's not gonna be onion soup anymore it's gonna be a relish you can add tomato paste in it and then make pasta and add it into your pasta that's a meal you can do this with nuggets mashed potato and pour it over and give to your kids if you have peas you can do that and that other thing that i the bread in the chicken how i was making it if you are a vegetarian you can use that the cauliflower to do that and it will still taste good so i just chopped one onion and i'm going to peel and grate two cloves of garlic it's going to be the base of the soup that we are going to make or part of the base of the soup that we are going to make so it's one onion and two cloves of garlic then we are going to heat the oil deep frying oil guys not olive oil not canola oil the one that you know sunflower oil is the best you're going to take out your chicken that you that was chilling in the fridge for 30 minutes and now we are going to deep fry it or fry it you don't have to use a lot of um oil this is enough we are going to fry it until it is golden brown remove from the oil put it into your into a bowl that you probably have with a paper towel or paper whatever it is that you have if you don't have a paper towel guys you can use newspaper so that you can absorb the the oil that is going to come from the from the chicken why i say that we if you grew up in the village you know how how it used to be where they were selling chips they used the newspaper to wrap the, the, the chips it's okay you can do that once you remove the first batch you can now add the second batch or until <coughs> you have fried up all your chicken our next step will be melting of 50 gram of butter if you are doing three chicken <coughs> breast please make it 25 gram it's going to be a lot of butter. You're going to, the receipt that I just showed you now is going to be, you're going to cut it into half. Because 50 grams for three breasts is going to be a lot. Uh, so we are frying the onion and the garlic in on, with the butter onto the melted butter. We're going to fry it until it is tender. Once you're satisfied that it's tender, then we will proceed to the next step. So you let it cook for a few minutes. It doesn't, don't let it burn. It doesn't have to be brown as long as it's tender. Then you are going to first add two tablespoons of flour. Stir it in. See you. 
I work with how it looks, but I think this comes with after cooking for a for a while that you can see, you can measure with your eyes how something is going to turn out. So I'm adding another tablespoon of flour into the pan. You just need to stay it in a little bit and let it cook for a little bit without it getting bent. Ne? Don't let it get bent, guys. Then we are going to add the soy sauce mixture. It's one and a half cup of water and two tablespoons or two and a half tablespoons of soy sauce. I used dark soy sauce. I didn't have a light soy sauce. Hence, my color is very dark, but it tastes the same. But if you're going to use the dark soy sauce, guys, taste every time when you add something, taste your salt, taste the how it tastes because if you keep adding if you add the seasoning on top of without tasting you might have a conflicting taste i added another cup of water while i was talking while i was still talking you saw that i added another half a cup of water i added onion powder cumin coriander into the mixture i ordered paprika i added italian italian herbs and a little bit of yellow salt you need to taste this at this stage you can tell if it's too thick or it's the consistency that you like i felt that mine was too thick so i i did put two tablespoons of water again but i didn't show it here taste the salt before adding your chicken i was satisfied with the taste of the chicken of the salt then i added my chicken back into the pan so when i was busy doing this i remembered <laughs> that you know what mm. i did two portions of the chicken but i used the pan that I use when I make one portion. So you can see it's difficult to stay the chicken in, but we managed. Once that is done, you can add your fresh herbs. I, I chose mine. I did the fresh chives, I guess. And it was ready. I served it with rice, guys. You can serve it with whatever it is that you want. I like mine with rice. And it tastes, mwah, it tastes delicious. I understand why my son loves it. These are the eggs that are going to be part of the filling for the sandwiches. I made it on a pan. It's eggs and, and spinach. I added seasoning. You can add seasoning of your choice. Then after dinner, I proceeded into now preparing the sandwiches. The or the sandwiches. What's the difference then between a sandwich and a sandwich? I don't know. And I'm cutting my rolls into half. I'm going to put cheese and the cold meat in there. I had beef pastrami. I had cheese, beef pastrami, uh, turkey pastrami. I had wafer thin chicken. I have wafer thin turkey pastrami, and I had oh turkey. I had wafer thin beef and. The eggs I used for chia butter, it was part of the chia butter filling. 
so i'm going to do this once i have put everything that i wanted to put that i want to put into the rolls onto the rolls i'm going to wrap it with wax paper and then i'm going to start freezing them in batches i'll probably the last batch will probably be by tomorrow morning so you don't put everything everything all at once it's going to drop the temperature of your freezer you need to put them in batches guys batches batches are going to work best for you that's what i'm going to do in this case not everything all at once Because it was late last night and I didn't get to shoot the entire thing of me making sandwiches. This is the chia butter sandwiches that I made last night. Uh, I left uh, three out. I didn't put up. I didn't put it in the freezer because I, I saved it for us to have for. For, for 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 breakfast and and lunch so this is how they look the other one is cheese cold meat and eggs and the other one is cheese and cold meat i don't spread anything on my rolls or my bread because i don't want anything to make it soggy 
but when you warm it from the freezer the cheese melts and it creates that moist that you need when you're having bread and guys this is filling this is filling these are two slices of chia butter and i put fillings inside and i cut it in half we each eat half we eat on let me say we each eat a slice of chia butter it's not a thin slice though but we each eat one slice of chia butter one slice of chia butter with a filling and it is fulfilling whether for for breakfast it could be slightly heavy but for lunch it's perfect 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 and these are the off cuts of the chia butter which we are going to make croutons from i'll show you guys the steps of making croutons remember i don't throw away anything i do not throw away anything oh these are still the exact i think i forgot that i put it in the other part so today it is another day third day that was the, the same day that i showed you guys the the sandwiches after i took a bath now we are cutting the off cuts of the chair butter ne? We are going to make croutons. You cut them in bite sizes because croutons most most of the time they go into a salad, a green salad, and you can make panzanella. I love making panzanella out of this. One day we, in future, we will make panzanella because this is a lot. I don't have the, the all the ingredients for it now, but we will make panzanella in the coming weeks from the croutons that we're going to make today because we don't throw away anything, guys. We don't throw away anything. And this is actually a snack as well. You can have a snack, you can snack on it. If you have infused olive oil with garlic or chili, you can use that one. I didn't have, I just had um, olive oil. So I added parsley. I don't put salt in mine because anything that you make with croutons, you're going to have either, you're going to have a dressing and a dressing does have salt in. So I just put herbs, whichever way that you have, preferably dry herbs and olive oil stay it in and you're going to bake it until it is golden brown at 180 degrees 180 degrees guys it is the safest temperature in your oven whenever you're making something safest you can reduce it to 175 or what but it's the safest 190 can burn your things eh this is how it looks when it is done. You can choose not to make them this brown. Take them out before they turn this, but there's no way that they were gonna turn uh, different than this because remember we used the crust. Mm. That's how, that's why it's like this. Now, on day three, we are going to make granola rusks or muesli rusks and we are going to beat eight eggs there uh, let me give you the recipe so that you can write it down it's 10 cups of cake flour 10 cups of bread flour i love the combination of this because it gives you uh, a texture that is between <coughs> bread and cake sort of yeah and it is 10 cups of cake flour 10 cups of bread flour eight eggs two cups of milk two cups of mass 500 gram of butter i melted it a little bit eight tablespoons of baking powder two and a half tablespoon vanilla essence one tablespoon salt quarter cup caramel sugar, four cups granola or muesli, and 
300 gram baker's mix you are going to follow the method on the video that i am just showing you now so now we are adding the vanilla essence into the mix and you are going to stir it in add the salt the two teaspoon or one one tablespoon salt so i was using teaspoon so i put two and we are going to add baking powder eight tablespoon of baking powder i prefer to put my baking powder onto the my wet ingredients my mom says baking powder flies i don't know how true that is area fofa when you mix it into the uh, flour but she still mix it into the flour i mix it into the, my wet ingredients and this is the 500 gram butter that i melted you don't you you shouldn't do this guys you should wrap it into your your flour but i was saving time the only thing that i know is that it it does it it has clumps i get so even if it, it has clumps even when you are rubbing it on the flour you are still going to leave some bits of the butter without rubbing it completely and then i'm adding granola this is homemade granola i think there's there's a video somewhere where i i i i, I showed you guys so though it's not a, it's not of good quality but it's there of how i make it and now we are going to measure measure our 10 cups of fl cake flour and 10 cups of bread flour this one i don't sieve i use it i do it as it is i don't sieve it rusk are supposed to be rough so there's no need for me to to sieve them so i don't sieve it i just measure as it is and then start combining I'm adding my baker's mix. This was 320 gram, but the recipe is the the recipe is calls for 300 gram. I mix it with the flour as dry ingredients, as a dry ingredient. It, this is reasonable, guys. For 300 gram, I bought it for 19 rand at Food Lovers, so it's very reasonable. Then I'm <clears throat> opening a well. And I'm going to add my wet mixture bit by bit. I'm not going to add it all at once, bit by bit. When I was mixing this, I remembered that some people are sensitive because after mixing this like this, I go in with my hands to make sure that everything it is well combined, like sticky and all. But I remembered that there are other people that are sensitive to those things so i'm not going to show you that step guys i will respect them once that was done i floured my surface washed my hands specifically for my for people that are sensitive so that i don't have any dough that is sticking to me on me and then i added two cups of milk more because it was dry but if you if you can look at it it is still dry guys it's still dry but this is how i want it remember we are making rusks 
rasks you bake them twice so if it's like this dry when you bake it for the second time there isn't too much moist that you are taking out out of the the baked goods so i like it the way it is you just need to make sure that it, it it's together man what is the proper weight it's combined well this is how i want it you can see that it's not sticking to each other it is not doing all those things it's it needs to look like this so that you will not dry it out for a long time when you bake it second time okay so you can see there wasn't too much residue of of it on the surface so that's how it's supposed to be that's how the texture is supposed to be i try to wipe my surface every single time after i use after i need anything on it so when you see me just throwing things on the surface or cutting anything on the surface even when i'm cooking know that i wiped it first guys i try to keep it clean so i prefer my rasks to have that roughness on top ne? for that to happen this is how i place it in my oven i don't use a rolling pin i don't want them flat i don't want them even i try to flatten it out to be even but you you will see when you see the final product i like it rough on top that's when i say rasks i'm talking about something like that so when i place it on my pen this is how i make it this mixture it will it, it will give you about 100 to 120 uh, pieces of rasks including the ones that are imperfect the ones that are on the side and all of that so it is a lot of rasks my family loves them and i do share them with other people sometimes so it's not only for our own consumptions but i prefer to have something for tea in the house and this is what i'm using to cut i'm using a cheese knife is it a cheese knife your nail yes to cut in the sizes that i want it's easy nothing complicated Rask, rasks are the easiest easiest things to make they take time but they are the easiest you bake them at 180 for 20 for 30 minutes and then you are going to trace your to trace cut them again from where you cut them before you put it in the oven and then you are going to separate them and put them on a cooling rack while you continue baking the rest of the dough once everything is baked if you have a big pan you now put them in a big pan and you are going to bake it bake them for three hours to four hours at 100 degrees 70 to 100 degrees it depends on your on your oven until it is hard and there's no moisture or you can let it bake overnight at 70 degrees by the time you wake up in the morning it will be rasks this is how they look i'm going to set them aside on a cooling rack and we start we continue with another another page okay this is how it looks and this is how i place it in a pen i don't have a big pen so i use small pen but at the end of the day i took out the rack of my stove it's big the one that you see here i put a lot so i made about i only used for I baked it because it's two I only did it for six hours the first two and the last one and then 
it was ready. This is some of it. It's not every. If it's not ev It's not all of them. It is some of it. So you see the when I say it, I love them rough on top. I mean like that. I don't want them perfect. I mean that I like them rough like this. They should not be perfect. Mm -mm. We don't do perfection. Once my rusks were baking in the oven, I proceeded into making dinner. My dinner was simple, guys. I just cut the potatoes, baby potatoes, or any potatoes that you have in the sizes that it is not big or too small, and I deep fried them in a pan. <coughs> I made about, oh, I made about two small packets. And I fried um, beef, cubed, I bought it cubed, I didn't cube it. I fried my cubed steak and I added seasoning of my choice. A little bit of salt, onion powder, thyme, cumin, and then I mixed together and I let it cook for a little while until it was completely cold or until it was brown. I served both these with salad and that was it thank you for watching until here thank you so much I appreciate you guys I appreciate those who come even if you watch for one minute or a second I appreciate you please like subscribe share thank you I love you I appreciate you Bye.